Ron, how did you get into cycling? I originally got into cycling through touring, music touring. I used to play in bands. I played bass and drums and guitar and sang and uh, I would do long tours and when I'd come home I'd always feel like shit. I'd be super tired and nutritionally deficient sort of like fitness would be in the shitter and uh, just looking for like a really efficient, engaging, kind of aesthetically awesome way to get back in shape from touring. And I was really into the movie Breaking Away. So I was really into like sort of the, the aesthetic and the look of like vintage cycling. I mean, I was in my 20s and early 30s at this point. So, uh, so I got, you know, a road bike from the mid 80s and started doing rides and uh, just kind of kept at it from there. And it, it's also one of these things that is very focused around routine and sort of domesticity, at least for me, because it's one thing you can't do while you're on the road. You can't really travel. I mean, I, and, and no, that's not good because you can't travel and ride. People do it all the time. They call it the pro tour. <laughs> yeah, but the whole thing's based around that. Right. For, for me, it was a way of sort of like carrying on this sort of like domestic home life where when I got when I got back home, I would get really into riding and building bikes and sort of like mixing and matching. Got into it through like fixed gear riding and, and kind of like vintage steel road bikes. And so it was kind of, it was kind of like my, my weird little workshop thing at home that I got to go out to the garage every day and like, you know, put new bar tape on and shellac it and look at the Rivendell videos and twine my bars and get really into that kind of like, sort of very meticulous meditative type of way of like de-stressing and sort of decompressing after you know long sort of music tours where you're kind of like living very unhealthily and like spending a lot, a lot of late nights a lot of beer drinking and you know just just generally as a way to sort of like work myself back into sort of normalcy how old were you when that started i would say late 20s probably like 28 Something like that. 40, 44 now, so it's been a while. Sick. Yeah. And uh, what area was that in? Seattle. Seattle, Washington. It's, you know, it's a pretty good cycling city. It's, yeah. It's very hilly if you're riding around town. For commuters, it's too hilly. For people who like climbs, it's not hilly enough. So it's a, it's a tricky cycling city, Seattle. And then what, how did the dirt end up coming into the equation, the off-road stuff? Uh, started racing cross in Portland. lived in lived in Portland for about a year, and was getting more and more into cycling. And <clears throat> my buddy Brandon Day. Oh, the dead just the dead comes out spontaneously. Sometimes you can't keep Jerry in the pocket. <laughs> Jerry just wants to come out and start singing "Fire in the Mountain" at you. Um, uh, was working uh, doing music licensing with my buddy Brandon Day, who is also a big cyclist. And uh, we started racing cross together. We joined a team. I had never really done that before and got pretty into sort of the peripheral stuff involved with like cross racing. It was less about the race for me and more about like the training and the exploring and just the going out and riding because it unlocks so much terrain, having wider tires and the ability to get off of pavement. And the biggest bonus is there's like, there's hardly any cars. So you're out there like experiencing what you, what I really liked about cycling, but you don't have to do it around cars and you don't have to do it around traffic and it gets to take you to these amazing, beautiful places. And, you know, being on a racing team wasn't, you know, really my cup of tea, but our teammates would go out on these sort of weekend excursions and try out all these gravel roads, sort of like ostensibly to train for cross racing, but then we just dropped the racing part and then just ended up being like, well, let's go check out this road. Let's go check out that road. And eventually just started kind of like the map nerd in me, like intersected with like, sort of like the outdoors, you know, outdoors, uh, What's the word? Enthusiast? Enthusiast, yes. I wouldn't say aficionado because that's for like cognac and cigars, but like, yeah, enthusiast, hiker, backpacker, hikey person. I like trees, so it's like, you know, if you can find bikes out in the trees and the woods, and that's great. I like that. Where does the name Our Mother the Mountain come from? It comes from the 1969 record album by Texas troubadour Towns Van Zant, who was a very hard living country music icon. Um, he was, he was kind of like a, a, almost like 
clairvoyant type alcoholic songwriter who had sort of like seen the other side. He lived so hard and, uh, and so self-destructively that he, he almost found this sort of transcendental quality of life through sort of his uh, abusing of him, himself. He had sort of like seen death in the face and it sort of translated into sort of like his songs are so raw and poignant. He kind of has this almost like letter Cohen type quality about him, almost like transcendental quality, the spiritual nature of, you know, solitude in the woods that you get sort of writing, writing in some of these amazing out of the way places.